Hey Pisces, welcome to your December 2019 reading. I'm Gemstone Tarot. You are my lovely Pisceans, Sun, Moon and Rising and Cross Watchers and anybody else who finds themselves at this video. What do we need to know? What do we need to know? I'm using the Mythic Tarot, Juliet Sharman Burke and Liz Green and it feels very Piscean today. Pisces, Pisces, Pisces. Valentine joins us. She's asleep on the bed. You can just see her in the background. Okay, there will be an extended reading for this Pisces and the link will be in the description box. And do take a minute to subscribe to the channel and hit the wiggly bell because I'm doing more live readings. Being a Pisces myself, I tend to do them a bit randomly. So if you hit the wiggly bell, you will find out when they are do we need to know? Pisces, Pisces, Pisces. Oh, hello. I knew that one would come up, but I didn't know how. It's going to be an interesting reading, Pisces. <laughs> Our readings have been fairly interesting over the last few months haven't they do check out my pick a card readings as well they're in the description box i'll put the playlist in there for you don't feel like those are for you actually for some reason whoa which one is that okay This is a weird energy that I'm getting, Pisces. Feels a bit Alice in Wonderland. Feels a bit topsy-turvy. I know that's nothing new for a Pisces, really. But even more than it normally is, is what I'm saying. I'm always reminded, and I know I've said this to you before, of the late and great Jonathan Kainer, who is a British astrologer who I love. And when he talks about Pisces, he talks about Pisces lurching from one ravine to another, like jumping the ravine from one precipice to another in that kind of chaotic timeline that Piscean lives seem to take. And he says that some signs may be alarmed by this seemingly kind of dangerous and random way of living. But he said that there's this kind of gossamer of almost like when you do a trapeze jump and you've got that net, that Pisceans have this safety net. And I'm kind of feeling that. I'm feeling that underneath the reading. It's a really strange energy. Yeah, there is a momentum for you in December. It's a strange momentum, a really strange momentum. I've got the Two of Swords in the reverse and the Two of Swords in reverse is where you've previously been tied up in a situation or you didn't know which way to turn or you had no clarity about which path. It's not even that you can't make a decision. It's just that there are no paths in front of you. You know, the Two of Swords is often a character who's blindfolded. And, you know, we've just come out of a lot of Mercury retrograde in November, which was tricky. It was in your fellow water sign of Scorpio. There was probably a lot of muck and mystery around a subject that you didn't understand and the veil appears to be lifting in December. Now, I'm not saying that it's like a theatre, the curtain goes up and all of a sudden you can see everything you need to see. Really not that simple. It's a strange kind of magic here. It's a strange kind of progress. It's a strange kind of set of revelations. It's very Piscean. It feels like boxes within boxes within boxes and you open one box and you ah oh, you know and then you open the next box and you think ah oh, it's that kind of thing the top of the reading we've got the six of swords 
I like that a lot. There is a clear and distinct movement away from, <coughs> excuse me, away from confusion. We also have the four. So we have the two, the four and the six of swords and think of them as multiplying in a very healthy, even numbered kind of a way. Two, four, six. In a way, I feel like you're getting out of confusion and you're getting in the boat, which is a very Piscean thing to do. Obviously, if a Piscean was ever going to escape, it would be in a boat. They either swim away or they get in a boat, okay? The difference with the Six of Swords Pisces is that, is that it implies help from someone else. Notice with the Six of Swords, there is, um, there's always someone in the boat. Often it shows you someone ferrying a woman and a child in a boat. It's what I call the lifeline. It's a nice energy, Pisces. It's a port in a storm. It's a light in a cave. It's a route. It's a direction. Then we get the Hierophant. Chiron, the wounded healer in the cave, points towards the light. Again, seeing the light. Taurus energy and the energy of commitment in relationships. The energy also of self-understanding. The reason that the Hierophant in this case points towards the light is because you must discover the truth for yourself. Yes, he's got the scriptures rolled up and he knows what he need, what he knows. And yes, he is the mentor. But he invites you into the cave to see the light outside. To see what needs to be seen in order to get in the boat. It's a really strange energy. It's quite un-Piscean. Pisces, something here is wanted. The Hierophant, the Ten of Pentacles. The Ten of Pentacles is my meat and potatoes relationship card. It's got everything. It's the full enchilada. It's not a crumb, it's a loaf, you know. It's a real no-holds-barred relationship ambition. It's the arrival at the destination. We've, it usually has grandfathers, you know, fathers, mothers, children, however this is represented to you in your relationship model, okay? And that in the modern world is in many different ways, but however it is represented to you, okay? Whatever your full enchilada is, you want it. Hierophant, commitment. And yet, <laughs> and yet, there is some kind of defence going on. The Nine of Wands, defence. And the King of Swords. Some of you are involved with an air sign, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, or somebody who is not madly demonstrative in their expression of feeling. It's very common for Pisceans to be involved with people who are not madly demonstrative in their expression of feeling. I don't know why that is, but I know it is. I think it's because Piscean is a walking ex Pisces is a walking expression of feeling. <laughs> but I like this King of Swords. I don't always like the King of Swords. He is emotionally restrained. This could also, of course, represent a woman. So this can be a man or a woman. But this is an emotional partner for you or the person, your significant other or the person you romantically have in mind. Or a person you may meet, actually, if you're single, they are emotionally restrained. 
but not necessarily in a bad way. Often Pisceans, as Pisceans, we feel like provoking emotion out of other people when they're emotionally restrained so that we can feel comfortable in a sea of mutual emotion. This person doesn't want to swim, okay? But they might get in the boat with you. They don't want to get their feet wet. But they do like the look of that boat. I like it. I think it's funny. I think it's quite sweet. For a few of you, you may have had a romantic involvement with this person before. It may not be your first boat trip with this person. Because I get this, and I think we had it maybe last month, the Eight of Cups in reverse. Now, the Eight of Cups is Saturn in Pisces. It's a Piscean card, walking away from something you love that is usually indulgently bad for you. And I don't mean that necessarily, you know, it just, you know what a Piscean is like when they're bad in love. It's like that kind of... Um, a person is either destructive towards you or they are in some way emotionally confusing, hurtful, whatever it is. It takes an awful lot for a Piscean to distance themselves. That We're not creatures of distance, we're creatures of merging and enmeshing and all that kind of stuff. And yet when Saturn comes into Pisces in the Eight of Cups and Eights are a movement card... It's a loud and clear message that even a Piscean can't ignore to step away. <laughs> step away from the hot stove, you know. The message was received, but when it's in the reverse, it's reversed. As in, it can show a returning to a relationship. It can show uh, a break that then reunites. I like it actually in this reading because next to it I've got the Page of Cups which is like reborn love. It's nascent, it's sweet, it's innocent, it's an offer. And that is next to the King of Swords. Now some of you there may have been a third party involved because I have the Queen of Wands in reverse. It can represent fire sign Leo, Sagittarius and Aries, but for me as a reader, it comes up as my third party card. When it's in reverse, uh, the Queen of Wands as a third party card, it's a bit of a nightmare, to be honest. But the King of Swords and the Hierophant and the Ten of Pentacles. Somebody may clean up their business. They may clean up their act in a way they hadn't before. And it may have caused you before to have stepped away from it. I've got the Empress in the reverse as well. And for some of you, and this is only a couple of you, um, you may be dealing with someone where the third party is the mother of their children, as in it's a divorce or an ex-wife or something like that. Pisces. I like this energy. I like that page of cups. It feels, it feels like the King of Swords actually, you know, has to make an offer of some kind, an offering. And the offer is about getting in that boat. Just doing some Chuck Spezzano love cards, Pisces. Yeah. Get the problem card of pain. This person that you've been dealing with was previously unable or unwilling to look at a source of pain, possibly with a third party or an ex or their mother, possibly. But now it feels like they're more willing to dissect it and have a look at it together with you. You're both holding the stretcher of this pain. The healing card of giving oneself. Previously, I feel that that was missing and now there is a chance for the healing to happen where you can 
be seen, see and be seen. That's true intimacy, actually. And the problem card of expectations. Now, Pisces, our expectations are usually pretty high, pretty quick. You may need to curb that tendency. King of Swords does not move fast. But they're moved. I like this. In the extended reading, Pisces, I'm going to dig into, again, I did this for Cancer, I'm going to dig into the partner energy a lot more, but also where this is going and where it may have been. The fates. Fate may have turned in your favour here and there may be no tangible reason for it, but Pisces, who cares? <laughs> Take it. You get enough, you know, you get enough brush offs by fate as a Piscean, I think. So take the upturn, take the good stuff. Healing with the Angels card. Self acceptance. Signs and freedom. Pisces, I like this reading. Self-acceptance is contained within that Hierophant as well. And self-acceptance has helped the divine in bringing this into being. You will see signs that this situation is healing itself. I love that for you. I'm going to go and do your extended reading. If you want to join me, hop on the Vimeo link in the description box. Do subscribe to the channel, Pisces, and hit the like button, and I'll see you soon. Namaste.